Alrighty hosses, welcome back and in this video I want to start talking to you guys about IP addresses. Now in the last video I told you guys how to use binary. It was actually a video from 2009, one of my earlier videos, one of the first ones I actually ever made. But the reason I told you guys about binary then is because you need to understand binary before you can really understand IP addresses. Now a couple key points before we begin is this. So in that last video we were demonstrating on an 8-bit system. In other words, we had 8 decimal places, 8 zeros or 1s. Now we saw that with the 8-bit system, we can have 256 different values. So that's how many possible combinations of zeros and 1s that you could have. Now a cool little formula for figuring out how many different values you can have depending on what bit system or how many places you have is this. If you take two, wow, that was a horrible two. If you take, all right, two, and you put it to the power of whatever bit system you have, such as eight, that's going to give you the amount of values. So in other words, let's say that you had a 32-bit system. So you had 32 ones and zeros. If you took two to the 32nd power, this is going to give you something like four point three billion now this is actually pretty important because later on we're gonna see that an IP address is essentially like an ID number for your computer and this means that we're limited to four point three different computers or devices that are allowed to be connected on the internet and I'm gonna show you guys exactly why this is a problem and how we get around it it's actually pretty cool but first I need to explain something else now let's forget about computers, let's forget about IP addresses and binary for just a second because I want to explain how to send a letter through the mail. Now I know people don't do this very often but whenever you send a letter through the mail you gotta put a stamp on it and then you write your return address right here, Bucky Roberts, New York, yada yada and I don't know, let's say I'll send one to my friend in Texas. So I'll write his name, I don't know, like Tom Smith and alright whatever whatever Texas you know the zip code alright so we have two different addresses that are needed whenever you want to send a letter this is who I'm going to send it to and this is my return address and it works pretty efficiently because whenever we give it to the mail lady or the mail guy she knows exactly where it's going and where it's coming from and also whenever Tom receives this letter if he ever wants to send one back to me all he has to do is he just looks at the return address now IP addresses are a lot like regular addresses just you know for people for sending letters they're used to identify each computer so that they can communicate where do you want to send the data and whenever you know let's say you're requesting uh, some pictures from a server whenever you get that data back where is it supposed to send it simple enough now every single device that's connected to the internet is assigned an IP address now like I said an IP address just like a regular address this is just a way that we can identify each different device now whenever I say device I'm not just talking about you know laptops and iPads I mean routers they have IP addresses um, every server has a unique IP address so again like I said this is a way that we can identify which device we're trying to communicate with. Now whenever you see an IP address and if you want to see your own just go in Google and type in what's my IP and it's gonna pop up but you're gonna notice that they're written in this weird format it kinda of looks like it's broken up into four different chunks one two three four and these four different numbers are separated by dots now these different chunks these different numbers they're technically called octets and they're broken up just so it makes it a little bit more readable instead of one long huge number but essentially what you can do is you can take this 32-bit IP address and you can convert it to its binary format so each of these numbers can get translated into an 8-bit string now since we have four of them that's why every single IP address is 32 bits and there are some exceptions that I'm gonna to talk to you guys about 
later on why those are and what those exceptions are all that fun stuff but essentially that's what an IP address is behind the scenes it's a way to identify each device on the internet and it gets translated directly to binary whenever computers actually want to send and receive data